Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to do, uh, I think we're going to play um, interactive horror stories. I think that's what it's called. So we're going to go through this and see how it is. It seemed like I, had, I didn't have any reviews, um, but we'll just check it out ourselves and see how it goes. Let's get started. The doll. Is there a sound? No sound? That's weird. Hold on, let me go back. I feel like there's no sound. As a single mother, you know how hard it is to look after a 13-year-old girl. Hard, but still joyful. Her presence gives you all the strength you need. Her name is Lisa. She is a shy girl. She doesn't talk much. She got divorced three years ago because she cheated. he cheated on you with his secretary. Lisa misses her father, but you don't allow her to see him. She adores her father, but you think he is an asshole. Well, all right. <clears throat> Lisa is a special kid. Her teacher once said that she is too intelligent for a girl her age, but she already knew it. Her reactions was unexpectedly mature. She is also hardworking, and you expect you expect perfection from her. Her teacher told you that you must take Lisa to a psych psychiatrist. <laughs> you will do it soon. She is a lonely girl, maybe because she doesn't talk much. You think that she needs friends, so you brought her. You bought her a rag doll to seize her loneliness. <clears throat> You bought the rag doll from the local toy store. Not an expensive toy. Nothing too fancy. Lisa might still like it. You know that expense that expenses make Lisa happier. The doll is a girl with a big blue eyes and curly black hair. She has a wide grin that you can call friendly. Her dress is red, matching her shoes. She also has eyebrows. A named doll once waits for her new owner in kids beth in kids bedroom. She you haven't brought Lisa home from school yet. You know, I wish there was music to this. <laughs> it's Friday. Nice sunny day. The sky is covered with gray clouds. You're driving your car. You're driving your car. Lisa sits on the next seat. The seat belts are worn tight. She looks from the window blankly without any expression on her face. You remember that math exams you remember that math exams results were going to be announced today. How are the men? How one? How are the exam results? Two. Were you able to make any friends today? I bought you a rag doll today. Continue driving. Ah, uh, I just ask her. Lisa sighs and says, "Terrible. I am the seventh in the class, not first like the previous exam. I know you will be mad at me. I didn't study enough." It's okay, darling. You are right, Lisa. You should have studied more. We'll we'll say it's okay. She looks at you with a slight, slight surprise. You always scowled her whenever she wasn't the best. Now you say, it's okay, darling. She continues watching the cars pass by. You are driving your car. You are driving your car. Lisa sits on the next seat. The seat belts are worn tight. She looks from the... Oh. Oh. Um. I guess we'll expose. Oh, no. That's nice. Thank you, she says. There isn't any excitement in her voice. But let's just continue driving. You finally arrived home. The doll is in your bedroom. The doll is in your bedroom, Lisa, you tell her. She climbs up the stairs slowly, apparently. She is not so excited about the doll. You follow her to her bedroom. She picks up the doll that's on her bed. I will think of an, a nice name, Lisa says, but I have got home. I, But I have got homework to do first. Play comes after study. Okay. Yes, study. Don't go hard on yourself. So you leave Lisa alone in her room. You have a lot, got a lot of work to do anyway. Not only you will cook, but you will also need to work on a novel's cover illustration as a freelance artist. The deadline is so is close, so you have you work hard nowadays. I'm not a very good, <laughs> I narrator, I guess. So I'm sorry, guys. You are not so happy with your life. 
You force Lisa to study in order to have a better life than yours. You work all day. The only break you take is dinner. You don't talk about anything during dinner with Lisa. I really, I, I wonder why there's no music in this game. It's bothering me. It's 22 o'clock. What is that? Hold on, I think. <laughs> Bedtime for Lisa. You visit Lisa before she sleeps. She's in her pink daughter pajamas. She is holding a doll in her arms. Mom, I'm going to tell you something, but you won't believe. After a few seconds of her silence, she speaks a doll can speak. She told me her name is Anna. What? That's impossible. Hmm. Go on. We'll do hmm. Go on. Lisa explains. Anna says that she was she was nothing but a piece of light. A light that's drifting in absolute blackness. A weak light in the infinite darkness. Then she found life in this doll. She was waiting in a toy store for a friend. Lonely and today she found me. She said that she loves me. Number one. Don't be ridiculous. Dolls can't speak. I believe in you. We need to throw the doll away. I believe in you. Keep the doll. And what did you tell her? We'll do what did you tell her. Lisa smiles, and Lisa smiles, and I said that I will be her new friend, and I'll always love her. She continues, and then she told me that she was happy, happy like the times when she used to be an angel. Don't be ridiculous. Dolls can't speak. I believe in you. We need to throw the doll away. I believe in you. Keep the doll. Okay, we'll just, we'll just have her keep the doll. We'll just have her keep it. Lisa doesn't know her emotions usually, but this time, you can see that she's surprised. Oh! Thank you very much, Mom, she says. You kiss her goodnight and leave her with Anna the doll. <sighs> because of all the homework, you begin to feel tired and you go to bed. It doesn't take long for you to fall asleep. A few hours later, you wake up from the sounds coming from the outside. You hear hysterical laughter coming from the garden. They belong to a girl, specifically Lisa's. You stand up and look outside the window. You see Lisa standing and laughing in the garden under the pale moonlight. She is facing back. You can't see her face. Shout. Go to the garden. We'll go to go to the garden. You climb down nervously. You wear your shoes and walk to the garden. Lisa doesn't react to your presence. You approach Lisa and put her hand on her shoulder. She turns her face to you. It's not Lisa's face. It is not even a human face. The texture of the face is gray rag. The eyes are quite big for a human. So is the wide smile. The voice changes. It doesn't belong a girl now, but a demon. She stares at you and laughs. You wake up. It was just a nightmare. You're all sweaty with terror. The morning has already broken. You decide to check on Lisa. Lisa's sleeping peacefully, hugging Anna. Uh, Anna. Anna is carrying that wide smile that annoys you now. But hey, it is, it is normal. It would be terrified, terrible if the doll's face was different than how you brought, bought it. <clears throat> Sorry. You go to the kitchen to prepare a weekend breakfast. You usually make omelet with sausage on Saturdays. You'll repeat the habit today. You are in the kitchen. You take the sausage and eggs from the fridge. You need to slice the sausage. So you open a drawer to pick up the meat knife. Something's wrong. The knife isn't here. Search for the knife in the kitchen. Look inside the garbage bin. Hmm. We'll search in the kitchen. You search the whole kitchen. No drawer is not no drawer is not looked into. You even looked into the fridge. No, the knife isn't there either. There is only one place that I haven't looked inside. The garbage bin. You open the lid. You couldn't find a knife inside the garbage bin. You search a knife in every possible everywhere possible, but it's in vain. So you decide to use another knife to prepare the element. Yeah. <laughs> we search everywhere just for that knife and we could use another one <laughs> after you have prepared for the after you prepare the omelet lisa wakes up and joins you in the kitchen you eat the breakfast with her she doesn't look so happy there is uneasiness in her face the meat knife is missing did anna anna speak to you again you have to study today no play don't ask anything <laughs> She did not speak today, but she kept changing her facial expression. Sometimes she looked so happy, sometimes not. She was frowning. There was anger in her face. I can't understand her. Lisa continues the breakfast. You eat the breakfast with her. She doesn't look so happy. There is an uneasiness on her face. The meat knife is missing. I guess we don't ask anything. You have to study to play. The breakfast is over. You need to study math. Uh, says I need to study math says Lisa then climbs up to her room you also need to work on a novel cover you are both busy now 
we are both busy. It is evening now. <clears throat> As you work on a cover, you hear screams from Lisa's room. You rush to her room, you find Lisa standing, breathing in panic. Her arms are full of stitches. She did it! Lisa screams, showing her heavily wounded arms as blood leaks down to the floor. She jumped and ran away! Lisa points to the open window. Yeesh. You look outside and you, can see, you can't see any running doll out there. Dolls there. Maybe because she ran away. Or is it too dark outside? Or Lisa is lying. I won't allow her to alarm me. Slap. Slap? I don't want to slap her. You crouch and hug Lisa. As she, as she cries, I know how hard it is it, it is to believe me now. Thank you for believing me, but please, I want you to stay. I want to stay alone. I know that she won't come back. So you let her stay alone in her room. After closing the windows and locking the door, you make sure that no doll can trespass. You can get into your own bedroom next. You get into your own bedroom next to Lisa's room. You can hear her, in case she needs you. Oh my God, that scared me. <laughs> it is 3 a.m. now. It's raining outside. Lightning strike and enlight and enlighten your bedroom. You haven't slept. You don't care about the freelance work you got. All that events all these events make you too stressed to care about business. You see Lisa's silhouette at the door. She walks in. Lisa's holding something behind her back, but you can't see it. She approaches your bed, climbs in, and comes near you. <gasps> oh my god gosh with a sudden move she stabs the meat knife in your belly she stabs you once again you didn't allow me to live my childhood she keeps stabbing your body with insanity oh my god i hate you mom i hate you these are the final words you hear as you your own daughter repeatedly stabs you and commits oh my gosh the end there are two possible endings <laughs> bruh Oh my gosh. Should we find out what's other endings? Hmm. Wow. We should have asked her where the knife was at. We'll just we'll just go to another one. Mm. The funeral. After funeral is a after funeral is a modern gothic horror story that takes place three days after your son's burial. You receive messages in your computer, those claiming to be sent by your son's soul. He says that he wants to be with you once again, and he asks you to do a few, few things in order to be resurrected. Will you believe in the message? <clears throat> Let's play. You used to be a father. It has been three days since your son, Jonathan White, was buried in the graveyard of the local church. He was eight years old. He had golden hair and blue eyes, just like the beloved man in the carpenter song close to you. Since your wife passed away giving birth to Jonathan, and since he has been your everything, he was your angel, now he is gone. Hmm. He died on a snowy winter morning. You had gone to the market, leaving him in the home alone. When you arrived at home, you found Jonathan lying on the bed, motionless. His face was covered with his pillow, choked. Police couldn't find any trace of trespassing. You clearly remember the soul the solemn moments of Jonathan's funeral. In fact, you try to forget, but the de details are in front of your eyes, and they won't go away. The priest had intoned psalms and prayers, those you are not so familiar with, you are not so religious. While the lifeless body of your son laid in the church, his feet were turned to the east. He was wearing black suits and shiny shoes. He was, his skin was pale. He was way too young for all of this. He wished it was you lying in there instead of, of him. Like the day Jonathan died, it's a snowy day in all of, all of Ohio. There are three inches of snow outside. It's four. It's fourteen o'clock now. You are a writer who has been on writer's block since that day. Your favorite word processor is open in the computer. The screen is blank. You haven't written anything for a long time. Your cigarette butts in your ashtray and your black hot coffee in a blue cup on your work table. You chain smoke and consume a lot of coffee nowadays. You chain smoke and consume a lot of coffee nowadays. You're sipping on your coffee. And the doorbell rings. Let's. Don't open it. The doorbell rings once again, but you don't respond. It's probably Bob, your neighbor and friend. You feel so an urge to wash your face. Despite the cold day, your face somehow got sweaty. After washing your face, you look at your reflection in the mirror and notice your eyes got red, mostly because of crying and being sleepless. You use sleeping pills, but they don't work. They don't know, always work. You turn your back to your. You turn your back to your work table. 
You look at the computer screen that should have been blank, but no, it is not blank. Something is written on it. <gasps> Daddy, I miss you. Let's type Jonathan. You type Jonathan at the computer. At the computer, the new letters had appended at the text at the text in the screen. Whoever types it, he, she, it writes fast. When they are finished, when they are finished, they form two sentences. I can hear you, Daddy. Talk to me. Let's just turn it off, cause I don't know. <laughs> you turn off your computer, and the monitor goes black. Then some, then nothing else appears on the screen. You don't find anything to write in your novel, so you don't need to turn on the computer once again. And yes, also the text disturbed you. You don't you don't experience anything supernatural during the rest of the day. At night, you take your sleeping pills and fall asleep. You, ha you are having a vivid dream. You see Jonathan in the garden with green grass and colorful flowers. He runs around with happiness and angels. There are white-dressed angels around him. Everyone is smiling. You are not a part of this dream. Jonathan doesn't see you, but you are still contact with content with seeing him happy in this Eden. He was always a benevolent boy. After all, he deserved to go to heaven. You wake up to the sound of the doorbells. The door rings bell. What? The door <laughs> I'm sorry, what? The sound of the door rings bell. The doorbell rings. You take a look at the clock. It's 10 a.m. You wear your slippers and open the door. It's Bob. Hello, I need to show you something. He holds a newspaper in his hand. There is anxiety on his face. You take the newspaper. It's Ohio local news. news. Another kid choked to death. Officers are investigating the curious case of repeated death of kids in the state. Yesterday night, a six-year-old boy, Kevin Mitson, was found dead in his, in his bed by his parents. His face was covered with his pillow. What makes it this interesting for officers is this is this... Is the seventh time a boy died this way this month in Ohio. Recently, eight years old, Jonathan White also died with a pillow on his face. Sheriff Wilcott states that he finds the recent events quite interesting. <gasps> the end. There are two possible endings. Oh, that was... Okay. All right. Interesting. It seems like I have a few more, but I think I'll end it here, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed those stories. I know there's only two of them, and I'm not a very good narrator. But, Gan, that guys, thank you for hanging out with me. It was lovely, even though it was nothing but quietness. But, if you guys liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.